And hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Stuart Vine and welcome to another video by yours truly. And in this edition we are going to talk about WrestleMania 40 in night one and night two. Uh, a special event this, this year because obviously it's the first WrestleMania I've been able to go to. Uh, at the walkabout, Brighton walkabout, uh, was it with Hooked on Wrestling. Uh, we obviously went, me and Josh went last, uh, was it four years ago now? Was it Royal Rumble 2010, 2020? Uh, so uh, yes, a special occasion, so obviously we went night two. Got to see Cody beat Robbie Reigns to become the new Undisputed WWE Championship champion. And the place went nuts, it was awesome. So got to see that. So, but, but I, I digress. So in this, in this video, it's kind of a question. So we're gonna look at night one, we're gonna look at night two. We're going to ask the question, what night was better? We're going to have a little bit of an overview of night one and night two. And then at the end, we're going to sort of say, well, I'm going to say what basically I thought was the better night. So, but yeah, if you want to let me know what you think, please like and subscribe. Uh, that'd be really appreciated. And leave a comment below. Uh, let me know what night do you think was better, night one or night two? Uh, I'd be intrigued to have a little debate and then you know, we can have a discussion. You know, it's a civil, civil discussion, of course. But uh, yeah, so anyway, without further ado, without further ado, let's go dive let's straight into night one and let's talk about it. Yeah, so let's talk about night one. Obviously, it was, I mean, it was a good show. Um, it was basically built around the idea of, you know, the main event. Obviously, it's not the first show to be built around one show, one match, and it won't be the last. Uh, but obviously it was obviously Ron Reigns the Rock versus Cody versus Seth freaking Rollins. Obviously stipulation is if, if Cody and Seth wins, there's no bloodline interference. And obviously if the Rock and Roman win, there is going to be bloodline rules. And obviously in night two we had interesting about that. But yes, when it comes to this show in general, it was um, yeah it was good. it was a good show, but it felt weird because it fit, some of the matches did feel like they cut a lot of time off, so then we get more time to the main event. It kind of felt a bit strange because yeah it was. Um, there was a lot of good matches on. You obviously had, obviously had the opener with obviously um, Becky Lynch and uh, what was it, Rhea Ripley going against each other. It was kind of cool. Um, okay, good match. Obviously, Rhea Ripley winning with obviously hit. I like the kind of thing at the end with the whip tied onto the was a turnbuckle and then hitting a, whip, a second whip tied on Becky Lynch to get the win. It makes no sense for Becky to win there. To be fair, to be fair, because obviously Rhea Ripley is the hottest probably. Hottest thing going in wrestling right now, probably out there with the best, probably the most popular women's wrestler out there at the moment. So it makes no sense for her to lose the title. So, uh, but yes, that was good. Obviously, had a good match, but obviously, it, it was fine. It's like 17 minutes, that's good. Probably gave it, I feel, probably gave it, if we got like 20, 20, 22, 23, could have been a bit better. But obviously, it was still a good opener, got people going. And obviously, I was looking forward to the other match in like two more on this one, but it was still a good an opener, to be fair. Uh, obviously, we had the, uh, was it was it six pack challenge type ladder match? Obviously, with both the titles being separated, so ununify uh, was it finally going to ununify the tag team championship? So SmackDown and Raw tag team champion championship is going to be different. It's kind of nice because obviously it's kind of makes I guess and really, maybe they're trying to really push the brand extension again because that'd be great because it's one of the fav my favorite eras going in. So obviously we had uh, I went in going in thinking it'd be like maybe DIY wins the SmackDown and then maybe. Awesome Truth win the Raw. Obviously, I got half of that right because obviously, Awesome Truth fi finally uh, was all our truth in general. Finally, won at WrestleMania and became the Raw SmackDown. Uh, was it Raw Tag Team Champions? And but obviously, the SmackDown went to uh, Austin Fit and Jason Waller. Waller, if I pronounced that correctly. Uh, obviously, we're not unhappy with that. But then to be fair, that afterwards they did get kind of he got was it Jason Waller got uh, power bombed into a ladder. So he kind of. Um, you know, Philly, kind of happy with that to be fair. So that was awesome. But yeah, I think mean, it was a good moment with our truth for next. We all like our truth at the moment. It's probably the best one he's had for a while, but it was a bit clumsy. It was like another 17 minutes. Again, could have got more time. It could have been good. But um, yeah, I think that would have been, yeah, I think it was good, but it wasn't exactly, it wasn't like the match at night too. But, but you know, it was too fun. But it was just, I think the, um, the stipulation was a bit strange. Uh, but anyway, but yes, obviously after that, we had to obviously. The tag team match with obviously uh, William Mysterio and Andrade going against um, obviously Dominic, Dominic Mysterio and Santos Escobar. Again, a good match. Obviously, you got a lot of great people in there. It was good, but again, it just something felt off. It was only like, only gave it 11 minutes, so it's kind of felt a bit like it was quite rushed. Obviously, Rey Mysterio and Andrade got the win here. Uh, I don't know what it was, but the feud with obviously with him, like obviously Dominic Mysterio, kind of. Um, Going against his father, but obviously that's that was two WrestleManias in a row he's lost against his father. You would think it'd be kind of a situation where 
uh, he, he won here and then you know uh, was it Ray won the last WrestleMania so then it then it'd be a situation on the third the rubber match obviously it might be that might be the redemption match where you know Dominic you know stops being the um, kind of like the sport brat that he is and then turns uh, you know you know him and father get back together type situation maybe but that's me just fancy booking there but yeah just I don't know I just thought Dominic probably needed to win here because obviously Ray winning is fun I guess but he didn't need to win so interesting choice but that's my opinion but um yes and obviously we had um i'm talking about rivalries that are really personal obviously we had jay versus jimmy you saw brother versus brother as they stated uh the third time um, in wrestlemania history where brothers have gone against each other uh, it's kind of funny because when that when i heard that i thought well okay the untaken it's like oh no they're not brothers are they <laughs> they're just fictional brothers they're not in real life they're just normal people but um but yes yeah, so, yeah it's a bit silly but anyway but yeah it was again this is a fine match it felt like but what annoyed me is 11 minutes a match about brothers that's about like you know you know proper heated rivalry we've got 11 minutes and it ended the way it did we think it was a, uh, was it one uso splash and that was it uh we had that bit of betrayal thing where it's like i don't know like the thing was the situation with Obviously, the old I'm Jimmy was saying I'm sorry, and then he fell for it, and then he almost won the match. But it just felt flat. It just felt something was off about it. I don't know. Just I feel like again, more time would have been given on it. Maybe again, it's like 11 minutes. At least give it like 20 at least, because I think these we give them time. These these two can go. Yeah, obviously, they proved it the last couple of years being with the bloodline. So should have done it that way. Maybe I don't know. It's just it, it felt strange. Uh, yeah. So obviously that was that. So but you know, hopefully I got a feeling with obviously. Talk about with night two to go involved. I've got a feeling this rivalry is not over, but you know, at all. So, I've got a feeling that match will come up soon. Uh, obviously, after that, we obviously had the six women's tag, tag match Jay Cargill, Bianca Belair, and uh, Naomi going against Damage Control. Obviously, they were Carl Kai, Oscar, and Kylie Sane. Uh, yeah, for me, it was again it was a good match. Obviously, this match was basically uh, everyone looked good in it in a sense, and obviously, but let's be honest, it was a match to kind of make Jay Cargill look like a million bucks and she did um, but she got the win here as well that was really cool so she was obviously a great start to her career interesting to see what they do there but yeah it was good I mean again eight minutes didn't always stay it's welcome fun match to watch and um, yeah but obviously Jay Cargill looks good hopefully they see where this um, obviously now Bailey's champion obviously Bianca Belair is now on Raw obviously there's a draft coming up so maybe maybe there might be a, a feud where obviously Bianca Belair turns heel because I think she's gone as, as far as she can as a face but um, I think Bianca Blair heel turn would be, looks like it's on the cards at some point, and I'm up for it because I, you know, I think she's um, got protect She was we all forget NXT. She was a heel before she obviously debuted at uh, was when she debuted at WrestleMania. Uh, when did she debut? No, when she basically basically when she went to main roster. But yeah, you know. But yeah, I mean, good match here, good stuff. But yeah, it's definitely when you know, blow you away. But you know, it's like some people I feel online saying. This WrestleMania, this night one was kind of like no WrestleMania moments. It's like, I get that, but it's not the first WrestleMania out there that is built around one match. It's not the first pay view in history to do it, so I'm not surprised by it, to be fair. Uh, but yes, obviously, after that, we got two more matches off this. It was, uh, was it the one well, I was looking forward to the most in the entire, obviously, except for the main event. Um, I was looking forward to the most, obviously, because I'm a huge fan of Sami Zayn and I love Gunter as a performer, so I just do this match would be good. Uh, again, they gave it what 15 minutes? Was it 15 minutes 30 if you believe Wikipedia? Uh, but yeah, I mean, it was good. I mean, it was good. Obviously, I like the story of like it was Rocky Free story going in there, you know, with a bit with um, obviously Chad Gable being like kind of um, Mickey, Mickey, and obviously, was it Mickey? Yeah, Mickey, and obviously, he being uh, well, the Apollo Crews of the situation, and obviously. Apollo Cree. Is it Apollo Cree? Yes, Apollo Cree. Yes, the Apollo Cree the situation. Obviously, the Walker Free was saying he's afraid of Gunter. And um, I kind of like that story because obviously, the un any underdog story for Sami Zayn works because that's his whole, you know, the, uh, what's it? What's it? Uh, underdog of the underground type situation. He's just, he's always been great. So, then obviously, after almost when having the big high last year, which is this year, hasn't been going, we've calling the plan ever since then. So, but yeah, I mean, obviously, we all wanted um, Chad Gable. To have in this match, but I've got a feeling. Obviously, was this is recorded after was in war. There's going to be a Sami Zayn uh, Chad Gable feud, and again, I'm up for that. Obviously, in this match, was Sami Zayn won the match. Obviously, hit a um, looper kick and gets the win here. Also, um, 666 days of um, Gunter's Intercontinental Championship Ryan is over. A lot of um, end of long range in this um, in this WrestleMania. It's kind of mate. Since this 
we always know WrestleMania is kind of a season finale type situation when wrestling. But um, yeah, obviously it means Gunter can go on. Depends if he's drafted to Raw SmackDown. It wouldn't surprise me if he goes to, um, obviously because I've got Cody in SmackDown, I assume. Um, situation of, or they're going to swap the titles, maybe. Jasmine Day goes to SmackDown, or Cody goes to Raw. And obviously we have Gunter versus Cody. There's another matchup we can have with Cody winning. Obviously, I'm spoiling it here because obviously anyone who's watching this point knows what went on at WrestleMania <laughs> night two. But um, yeah, I'm up for this. But yeah, I mean, Sami Zayn winning it was a great moment. Obviously, crowd were a little bit. I feel, I feel like again, one minute, a bit more, a bit more, you know, near falls, more like Cody. Or was it? I mean, uh, Sami Zayn kind of like not like just kicking out and, and slowly but surely surviving. A bit more of that might have made it a bit over the top and a bit more build and storyline maybe would have worked. But uh, yeah, it's good. It was good. Same as same one, I was happy. I thought Gunter would win because I didn't see Sammy winning, but I got it wrong. It happens. I know it happens now and then, but yeah, so obviously that was a good match as well. So obviously then we set up two at the main event. Obviously the Rock and Roman Reigns going against Cody and Seth freaking Rollins. Uh, yes, obviously they gave it what? The long, single longest match and thing. They gave it what? 45 minutes? Yeah, long match here. Uh, really enjoyed it. I mean, it had everything. It had... Uh, had distractions, it had near falls, it had kind of like tension. Uh, obviously, I like, I kind of like the idea. The, the Rock look amazing in this match, I gotta be honest. Uh, maybe I'm just used to legends coming back and they always look like the age is catching up with them. Um, but Rock here, he looked great. Like, maybe it's because his style kind of works for that. But yeah, I loved it. Um, obviously, the idea was you had the, you did have a table spot, obviously, with the big one with Cody putting doing the Rock bottom on the Rock versus the, didn't go for the announced Spanish announced table. I don't think there was used the entire night to be fair because <laughs> obviously the poor announce table between the actually it was always the one that used to always get used but um yeah so that was good um i enjoyed uh, obviously that was an awesome bit obviously had the bit where cody was it seth got taken out think, by roman through the barricade so obviously but he was out a long time on that so obviously like i never seen anyone get taken out of barricade so much that like how long it did but i guess for the finish like the idea obviously that the rock got the win um, so it was obviously the would hit the rock bottom, then he hits the people's elbow for the win, he pinned Cody, cold so obviously it set off a night two with the bloodline rules. You knew it was gonna happen that way. Um so um because obviously if you're gonna make it the, the win feel bigger, you've got to stack the deck against him. So it made sense. Um but um yeah, but all forward to show uh, night one at least. It was good, but it wasn't it felt off. It something felt off about it. Uh, obviously my favourite match obviously the main event and obviously the Gunter versus Sami Zayn. The other ones were decent but it didn't have, I don't think they may be still low, it didn't have the heat to make you really care about it if you know what I mean. So um, I don't know but um, yeah so obviously I liked night one but um, it didn't blow me away. So that's my opinion now, let me know in the comments below if you like night one. Uh, so yeah so obviously we've talked about night one, let's talk about night two. Because my god a lot of awesome stuff happened on night two, so let's talk about it. Let's talk about night two. Uh, obviously, this is the one that had the one that everyone's really looking forward to. Absolutely, like obviously, we'll, we'll just talk about night one. Night two is obviously going to be the bit where obviously the main event was Cody versus uh, Roman Reigns. Obviously, with the stipulation of bloodline rules, they interviewed Paul Heyman. I think in the show and said, "What is bloodline rules? Anything we damn want." So anything can happen in this match. So we, I couldn't wait to what, see what that. We all were kind of in the walk about looking forward to that match. But I mean, to be fair, there's a lot, lot more. I think it's just maybe for me, uh, they put a lot more effort into the actions that I was looking forward to on night two. So I was more looking forward to night two than night one because obviously one, I was going to walk about to watch it. Uh, so I get to watch it with fellow wrestling fans and my mate Josh that I enjoy watching wrestling all the time. And also a lot of the matches, if you watch my video, I did about five matches I'm looking forward to, to the most. Uh, a lot of the match, except for obviously Gunter and for Sami Zayn in night one, a lot of the matches I was looking forward to kind of was on this one obviously we had the good to obviously Sam Zayn obviously main event of night one so like we, but, but I think three of the matches elsewhere were in this show obviously we had the Seth, Seth Rollins versus Drew we had obviously we had uh, the match at the end we had obviously the main event we had obviously uh, was it Eel Sky versus um, Bailey for the WWE Women's Championship that was we loved the story there so it's more, it was more intrigued than that then it was obviously with the other women's uh, title match but so yeah, so I was going into this really excited, but um, yeah, good show, very paced, not as long. I mean, I was shocked because uh, obviously when we when I used to watch West, uh, when I used to watch the Walkabout, it used to be a situation. It starts at one a.m. and then 
you finish one about four or five in the morning. But in this case, you finish one about three thirty. Like it's really early. Like obviously not early for us at three thirty in the morning on a Monday morning. But in a sense, if you it was too out, it just they, they, I think they might have understood that you got to pace these shows. Uh, especially if they want to, a lot of them, they do a lot of shows outside the US, they've got to start pacing it to sort of like, it's not as late in other countries. I think that's why I did it. So that's what I was looking forward to. That's what I found from this show as well. It was paced better. A lot of the matches felt, didn't feel like uh, they were taken, you know, literally. Uh, they were like, no, not like kind of like you think, oh, let's so just give another five minutes. That would have been great. But you know, it was just one of those things. But um, I obviously had less matches, so I guess I had more time to kind of, because obviously the other night had seven, I think it's had six matches on the card. It was really cool. So, um, but yeah, obviously that's um, dive straight into obviously talking about the Kantai show as a whole. Uh, obviously, we had um, obviously the opening thing, Drew McIntyre going against the world heavyweight champion, Seth fucking Rollins for the World Heavyweight Championship. Obviously this whole feud, we all know that this match was built on the idea that it was supposed to be CM Punk, uh, but obviously he got injured with his injured arm, so it's a situation of he was never going to, yeah, he's not going to win. So obviously I picture a long time, a lot of people, his obvious choice was Drew, and he's been killing it as this kind of, he's heel, but he's not heel, kind of his deluded, like, kind of like, you know, face that, or like he always, like, he thinks, um, he's the good guy but obviously he's the bad guy so that kind of situation but um yeah i mean it's yeah. i'm going into this going i do have to win because as much as he is the heel he's never got his wrestlemania moment he got obviously he won the w championship in, in these pandemics and not against no fans thought he was going to win it i think the year, two years later when he won against bobby lassie for w championship bobby won that so i think when is he going to get his moment I think obviously last year we had uh, was it against uh, Gunter for the, against Shea, was it for the Intercontinental Championship? We thought that was going to be when he wins it. But he didn't win it then, so we're just like Drew, let Drew have his moment. There was all talk about you know money in the bank cashings and stuff like that. So we were like, okay, we're, 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 let Drew have his moment. But I mean, he did. I mean, this match was what ten minutes, but wow, what a ten minutes it was. We had like. like Start the match, yeah. Claymore kick, my god, like just out of nowhere. I thought, no, I'm not doing a Danny Bryan Sheamus situation, you know. Beat a record of the quickest title win, open him. Then, obviously, it was it Seth kicked out. We had a couple of stop whiffs. You had it basically it was like Roman Reigns versus the Brock or any Brock match where it's just constant finish finishes. I mean, it kind of worked because the story is um, Drew kind of needs to win this more than Seth, and obviously, Seth would be injured, obviously, after night one. Uh, obviously, we'll work on the leg and stuff like that. But obviously, Kurt, CM Punk was on commentary that will come into favor later. But um, yeah, I mean, obviously, constant films like four Claymore kicks. We had a couple of we had a pedigree. I'm sure we had a table spot as well. Uh, we had everything we used to open. It was like the fan. Obviously, when you got Philly, you got to have like a bit extreme, a bit of craziness, chaos. If you've got the Philly crowd, they're gonna get it's, it's gonna gonna get you going. So, um, but yeah, so that was, that was you know, it was good. But obviously, um, it ended with that we hit one. I think a third Claymore didn't work. Hit one well, and then hit hit the fourth one, got the pin. One, two, three, and what and is your new world heavyweight champion? Well, as we thought, because what I like about the story uh, with the, the ending of this match is the idea if if Drew just walked away, had his moment, walked down the ramp, he would have been fine. He would have came into obviously what was it Monday, was it Raw last night or SmackDown as your world heavyweight champion. But his ego got the best of him because CM Punk was there. He wanted to rub it in CM Punk's face. And he took it too far. CM Punk had enough. Hit him with the was it the brace that's on his arm. And then we, with him down. Guess who came out? Drew McIntyre. Was it not Drew McIntyre? Damien Priest came out. Cashed in. Hit his finisher. He gets to win. He walks. Finally cashes in that money in the bank briefcase. And becomes your new world heavyweight championship. So basically... The Judgment Day now have the World Heavyweight Championship and the, the, the Women's Championship at uh, Ripley. So they've got basically all the power now. So it'd be interesting. Obviously, it was, inter it was um, interesting on Monday. I haven't watched Monday Night Raw yet by recording this. I'm actually going to, first time in a very long time, I'm actually going to watch the show because obviously it's late. And but actually, with this new era they were talking about that uh, for the show, you know, the Paul Levesque era. I kind of want to check it out, to be fair. So obviously that was it. Uh, that was cool. So obviously, Drew, but Drew basically was his own demons. He couldn't let it go. Had to stick it to CM Punk. And if he did, if he didn't think about CM Punk, he would have walked out champion. But he's not. Obviously, I think I've seen Raw bits anyway, where he's basically against Jay, who's going to face him, and obviously CM Punk cost him again. So I've got a feeling CM Punk's back from injury, so or soon. 
because it makes no sense if not doing this now, if not setting up, there's a match going to come up at Backlash um, in France, for Paris, France, if I'm correctly. So um, that's going to be interesting, but yeah, everything about this was great. Cash in, had everything, had a cash in, multiple near falls, table spot, you know, great character ref characters. It was everything, and it was great opening, the crowd were loving it. Um, I think I put it on my videos on Instagram when it said, Port Drew can't get a break. And I think that's the point. Um, all, this, the, all these changes just so he can finally win the title. And he did, but his ego got in the way. He's his character, you know, like he couldn't let it go with CM Punk and it cost him the title because he lost it in a matter of seconds. So, yeah, so that was interesting. Uh, obviously, after this, we had, and it really it was obviously had a six man, uh, was it sh fi uh, a Philly street fight? Obviously, between the Pride, obviously, was it but Bobby Lashley and, or was it, was it, it was called a Pride, we didn't say that, but it's Bobby Lashley and the Street Profits going against the New Testament, the Final Testament, I mean, with Karrion Cross, obviously, and the Office of Pain with, obviously, Paul Evelyn and, obviously, Scarlett is there as well. Um, so, yes, yeah, so obviously, this match, you think, okay, it's not really built because, obviously, there's been a feud between these two teams ever since, obviously, the Final Testament debuted. So, it was like, oh, there's no story there, but... What, they, oh, what I like about this match is this little tweak made it way more interesting. All he had to do, all he did, was obviously the bit of shock when Bubba Way became a special guest ref. He like, oh, Bubba Way Dudley, and it's just, and it's like, oh, okay, that's cool. So we've got, so we've got obviously a person that's really you know extreme you know, ECW connection to Philly, really cool option. And um, yeah, I think he did really well in the match. Really enhanced it. There was a bit when he obviously, you know, obviously was it, I think Karen Cross almost got the pin. Uh, also, I, think, I can't remember who it was, but like he always got a pin, and obviously, Bubba Way is like you know, the, you know the old thing where the heel blames the ref, but then he's like pushed him, pushed, pushed him like kind of well, you should have been free, that was free. But what I really liked is the idea that obviously Bubba was like, okay, and he's looking really involved, and he got the glasses, and it's just like oh okay, and it's just like the, the crowd popped, it was a great finish. Um, but obviously, obviously the, um, the Pride or what was it, Bobby Lashley. And uh, was it Street Profits got the win um, through a table spot? Funny thing is, there was a funny table spot where they tried to set up the table first, but it collapsed without even being touched. So, you know, just don't make tables like they used to. <laughs> so, that was a fun spot. Um, but yes, obviously, um, obviously we got a WhatsApp um, by, um, that was really cool by, uh, was it Street Profits? And but we lastly, it was really cool. Um, but yes, obviously, the end of it, I, the idea basically was. Um, was it Karen Cross got the got the pit? Or was it got uh, took the pin? Obviously, with, with uh, Montez Ford doing a kind of like a really amazing frog splash, probably one of the best ones in the business at the moment. Um, hit one through the table, gets the win, and they get the win there. Um, I should point out that obviously Montez Ford is amazing, and should get more airtime because my God, that guy's so good. Like, so there was a spot where he jump, you know, jumps jumps over the ring post and goes straight on the outside. It's like it's one day it's gonna end badly for him. But it was just a freaking awesome, awesome um, kind of spot. And it was a good moment, like a match. And it was like, what, a game of eight minutes? But wow, it was fun. It was just paced well. Then I would say it's welcome. It was just fun. And I enjoyed it. Maybe I look at it differently because obviously I was watching it with other people. So the apps, you can feel the tension through the apps here going there. But it was really good. It was really fun. And yeah, I kind of really enjoyed it. So um, BS obviously had that. Obviously, we had the obviously after that we had um, was it LA Knight going against a AJ Styles and it's normal everything has stipulation but this was a normal singles match. Um, yes, obviously, obviously you could say LA Knight's kind of tempered off recently, so it's kind of situation. Obviously, AJ Styles returns a heel. Uh, obviously, we've got a new theme song that obviously sounded really cool. That's really nice because we've been teasing it for a while. It's going to get a heel theme song, but um, yeah, it's a very good match here. I think. Um, it was um, nothing like spectacular, but it just it really showcased obviously how good AJ is. Obviously, he had the thing with, I think, uh, what was it? AJ was working on that leg. Obviously, he had a calf crusher. And um, later on in the match, obviously, he'd say, uh, what was it, early night? You know, almost, you know, you know, got out of it, basically, situation. But obviously, we had a bit near the end. What, what was it? Where he, uh, was it was early night. It was tearing that, tearing the kind of mat, protecting mat of the ground on the outside, trying to obviously hit, um, obviously, AJ with a power driver. But obviously AJ countered um, with a back body drop. He went on the um, on that exposed kind of you know how it works you know exposed kind of material on the on the outside. But um, yeah, it was really fun. Um, obviously AJ uh, was it uh, Ellie Knight got in, but yeah, obviously it ended with Ellie Knight hitting his finish and getting a win here. I mean it made sense. First WrestleMania, first win. Hopefully this will start a situation of now. That he's gonna because obviously he hasn't his whole thing is getting gold and obviously you know LA Knight's still very popular I mean when we're in the walkabout is the situation of everyone's going yeah like 
we love it, you know, he, he kind of represents kind of a bygone era. An era when it was all catchphrase and characters and, you know, and yes, he has the rock characteristic. Yes, he has a stone cold kind of voice. But it's not, like, it's not a parody. It's kind of like he's made his own. And it's just fun. And if it works, then I don't see why anyone has a problem with it. But, yes, obviously gets a big win against AJ, former WWE champion, two-time WWE champion. So, interesting to see um, who takes that top, uh, who's going to who's gonna go next, where he's going to go next. I I do think they're going to push the idea that basically it's going to be Alien Knight that takes that US title from, uh, what was it, Logan Paul? Because if he does, my God. Everyone's going to be happy there, to be fair. So, yes, it was a good match, but obviously it's not the best match in night, but it was still good. And it, and it was only 12 minutes, so it didn't overstay his welcome as well. So, it's, again, it's just, just, night two was just paced a little bit better. You know, it's a little bit better. So, obviously, we had the um, the triple threat for the United States Championship. Obviously, Logan Paul defending against Kevin Owens and Randy Orton. Obviously, going into this one, we all, I mean, at least you like Logan Paul, but everyone hates him because he, <laughs> as a human being outside wrestling, he's a gear. No one can deny he's amazing in the ring. He's picked up wrestling quite quickly. I'll give him that. But because he was really good in this match. But yeah, this was fun. This was fun. This is the match they gave up like most of the time, except for the main event. And 17 minutes. And oh, what a blast it was. You had, you had obviously Kurt, was it? Uh, we had the thing early on with obviously Kevin Owens come down with a golf cart. And obviously, was it Randy Orton kind of like, you know, coming along the ride, you know, give like, was it Kevin Owens like, who drove back and gave him one down the stage? That's really fun. Early on, it was just Kevin Owens and Roman Reigns. Uh, was it Randy Orton? I mean, just really just attack, going after Logan Paul. The old like take him out and then we can go against each other. That was fun. You had in all kinds of spots. You had a kind of um, I think what was it? Logan Paul. I think went for the table. Was we had like an archive for the table. Um, that was really good. Obviously, you've got a table spot. Obviously, the I can't remember what it was called. It, was it Show Speed or Speed? Was in that kind of um, prime kind of costume. Obviously, got his ass whooped. Um, by Randy Orton when he got involved later on in the match. We had um, RKO, we had RKO's, we had stunners, we had power bombs, pop up power bombs, we had everything in this match. Um, looks, and obviously, was it Logan Paul kind of st stole it? Well, we had a nice little thing where we had a pop up. I think it was like, was it Kevin Owens doing like a pop up power driver? And then obviously, was it Randy Orton kind of, um, kind of um, another one of those RKO's out of nowhere that's obviously just when you think he's found another variant of it, he finds a way to hit it out of nowhere. It's great. It's kind of similar to the Undertaker kind of. I thought it was similar to the Undertaker, Randy Orton many many years ago, where he, like he tries to go choke slam at him, but he inverts it into the RKO. It's really cool. So it looks like well, I, I I thought Randy Orton would go and win it here, but obviously the old situation of, you know, he hit it. Was he hit the RKO? Was it Longer Paul came back in the ring, he stole the win, and um, yeah, got the win. So he's still your United States champion. Uh, normally I'd be annoyed. I still am annoyed because I don't, I don't like him as a person. <laughs> but it's just, it was fun. It was good. It was good. Um, and obviously, he gets win. I get it. I mean, I still think, as I said before, LA Knight's probably, there's been rumors of ages, he's going to be the one that takes that title from. Probably going to be a SummerSlam. I'm only guessing here, but it was the only one that makes sense. Uh, I, forget, I keep forgetting that, obviously, this match, he had the thing with the brass knucks. Um, that was really cool. Obviously, he got the situation of, um, was using on everyone, but Logan Paul got a taste of his own with it as well. It's kind of a uh, nice. Come up, come up, if that's a word, if I can say it. But um, yeah, I mean, I'm not scared of this match. It's probably it had no right to be as good as it was. It's a match that you thought would be really bad, but it's really, really good. And um, yeah, obviously, yeah, why not? I mean, I would, I would have personally gone for KO winning because obviously with Sammy, obviously talk about that thing, that nice little camp. I forgot to say it on the camera angle bit where it's like you're walking down to the um, to the Titan John and basically like the camera's following you, but it's like they had a thing on obviously night one. Where obviously Kiss, uh, Kevin Owens was there waiting for him, saying, You go and beat Gunter. Obviously, he did. But um, yeah, I, and obviously, in this one, we had, um, was it Sami Zayn there, saying, Go and win a title here as well. Didn't win it, sadly. It would have been a nice moment because I could see it being like a kind of Eddie Guerrero kind of fun of something where don't talk about Chris Benoit moment where they both win titles and they go back and they have a good, like, you know, you know hug and that kind of stuff. But I'm, I'm sure we have it at some point. It just wasn't the time. I guess you can't always get what you want, but it's not really a big deal. I just thought it would be a nice moment. But yeah, good match here. You know, Long Paul guessing the right decision. I still think Anna's going to, you know, win it here. Um, could take that title for him and finally win some gold and eventually win the world title because I think he will at one point. Um, so obviously, after that, we had the match. Another one of the matches I'm really looking forward to. Obviously, Bailey going against Eel Sky for the WWE Women's Championship. I was, yeah, I was looking forward to it because the story of betrayal and obviously to have the redemption for Bailey because obviously. 
And the funny thing is, I never knew this. Like, she never, she never actually had a WrestleMania moment. Charlotte's uh, out of horse women. Charlotte's had a moment. Becky's had a moment. Obviously, Sasha Banks has had a moment. <sighs> but no, not Be not not Bailey. And um, but yeah, so obviously this this tell this storyline is all set up for Bailey to win. Let's be honest. Um, it was just it was just yeah. It w I was surprised if she came out of this. Obviously, I'm surprised. One thing I did was surprised that the damage control didn't get involved. But that's just stipulation I didn't know about. But um, yeah, it was just basically a clean one-on-one -on -one match. A lot of cool stuff. Uh, obviously, a lot of um, Eel Sky doing a lot of moon salts. What's it got? You know, genius of the sky. So you know, the namesake. A um, lot of them kind of uh, top one moves are really cool. We had a situation. I like the thing where I think uh, was it was it Bailey here? Was it trying to go hit a rose plant? But obviously, Eel Sky kind of countered out of it and kind of does like you know like a flip to get out of it. That's really cool. Just shows Eel Sky is very uh, underrated. Um, and I have to make no offense on the title. It hasn't been great, but. It's not really about it's not about the title, it's about the betrayal, so it's interesting. But uh but yeah, so I like that, obviously, but Bailey did get the win. Obviously we had a I like the thing where she was it Aeos Sky hit that moonsault, got the was it she, uh, Bailey kicked out and then hit more multiple ones. Uh, she had like three in a row and Stu kicked out. Uh, but yeah, she obviously was the Rose plant, gets the win. Uh, comes out, was it three time, like four time, not quite sure, top of my head. Uh, women's champion and yes yeah, she gets a WrestleMania moment and everyone was I, I was a lot of people might not be an interesting match I mean I think I was a lot of people some people weren't really bothered by it, but I really liked this match <sighs> would I say it's a better match than the other one I would probably say they're quite even I think this might top it but that's just my opinion but um, yeah it's a good match I love Bailey has you know won the title so it'll be interesting to see what they do next. Are they going to do more damage control situation? Which it might be a rematch at some point. But um, yeah, which is a lot of um, you know up and coming was it stars, of women stars coming out of um, WWE at the moment. So it's a lot of opponents, but Bailey's champion. It'd be nice to see her back as a kind of face because he's been here for a long time. So interesting to see what a face Bailey would be. So looking forward to seeing that. But yeah, great moment. Crowd work for it. Bailey won the title. So let's get to the main event. The one we're all looking forward to, let's be honest. Cody versus Roman Reigns with, with, for the undisputed WWE Universal Championship or the undisputed WWE Championship. Whatever you want to go for, I'm not really bothered to be fair. It's basically, it's a WWE Championship because um, it, it, they change the name of it every couple of seconds. So, you know, it's just how it works. But, um, but yeah, so obviously this was bloodline rules, anything goes. Um, and for most of the match, it was just a normal, you know, single match. Um, we had a uh, thought was in Rome, we was having fun early on. It was funny, like the idea is like, this is easy. He nicked um, kind of Cody's balls at crossroads, and um, obviously Cody kicked out. But I liked the I <laughs> Roman was really funny when it's like, that, 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 I don't have, that, that move can't be anyone. I'm, I'm having fun, like, um, yeah, Roman's trash talk is great. He's, um, he's probably one of the best ones, it's, it's really funny. But uh, yes, obviously, we had a lot of situation near falls. I still have that feeling in the back of my mind that I think they're not going to let Roman win again, are they? Not going to win. Like last year, it was like it bummed us out, but not this year. Surely, it's just, this is going to end the story. So every time Roman got close, I was like, I was like, I always had that doubt in my mind. But I forget this is a Paul Levesque era. Um, they don't usually just do swerve for swerve. It has to make sense. So it, maybe I've got a mindset wise, got to get used to that. So obviously after that, yes, obviously we had all that kind of stuff. But then afterwards, you know, at some point. Someone's going to get involved. This is when the match went nuts. Obviously, had Jimmy came out, hit a super kick on Colby. He's like, here we go again. It's like, it's like every match that we've had with Roman, it's just the bloodline is someone gets involved to help him win. Um, so, obviously, we had that, but it was it. It, just, it, just, it seems like the chaos five, ten minutes in the end where we had a situation where you obviously J Jimmy came out, then Jay came out, and then they fought. Then, obviously, we had uh, Sokoa came out, similar to last year, hit the Samoan spike. Didn't beat Cody, and obviously he was directing traffic when it comes to Roman saying, "Yeah, hit him." So he's gonna hit him again, and then all of a sudden, I didn't, I didn't really clock this one, but I do like it. With, what, with where John Cena's music hit, I was like, "Oh no!" Like the crowd, like when we walk about, I was like, "What the hell?" Then I thought, "Yeah, but he was the one that beat Sokoa, beat him, I think, at the Saturday Weber Show, I think." So it makes sense he was back, and obviously we had a situation took him out, but then The Rock came out, and obviously a big cheer, and obviously we had like a. You know, he got involved, he hit the rock bottom, I think, and John Cena. But we had that kind of face to face, you know, the once in a lifetime match that he had a cup. Kind of was the last rock match. We don't count everyone one, because that was just kind of a gimmick, not really a match. 
So yeah, so we had that, obviously had that, and then you thought, okay, there's rumors going around that, okay, who can come out? Um, Stone Cold would make sense. Apparently rumors were that apparently Stone Cold was, but he got ill, so they had to think of somebody else. Because obviously when The Undertaker came out, we were like, everyone across like, what is he, what is he doing here? And it's like, okay. We, well, I mean, it's great to see The Undertaker, but it made no sense of the story, but it's fine. It's sometimes, you expect silliness. Um, in a stipulation like this. So obviously, yeah, well, obviously here, yeah, the work with the uh, Chog Slam, he got out of the ring. Uh, then obviously after that, we had that Shield music, and I was like, no. For some reason, I'm back on my mind, don't know why, because obviously this whole stuff they've been um, Triple H teasing for the weekend, when he was sitting there going like, oh, someone, like, you know, someone's been talking, it's like, no, like, when he got Shield, I thought, they're not gonna bring back Mark Soto. Like, little thing on my mind, it's silly now when you think about it, but like, you know, you know we're waiting for it, waiting for it, then all of a sudden, it, and, and, and anticlimactically, obviously, uh, Seth came out from from the crowd, but then obviously, he got hit with, um, I think, I can't remember who did it, but he got taken out quite early, so it's like, okay. Uh, but yes, obviously, Chaos and Reigns, you know, we had all kinds of stuff, but then the kind of the finish of the match is kind of how it went, with the idea of, obviously, we had Cody down on one side, Seth Rollins on the other. He had a chair, and then basically, his, his own, you know, revenge he wanted for that, you know, betrayal all those years ago that still haunts him when Seth Rollins betrayed the Shield and he saw an opportunity to get revenge on Seth and not focus on Cody and that's what cost him his title. Yeah, so obviously he, you know, was it Cody, was it Ron Wayne's hit uh, Seth Rollins with that chair. Then obviously um, he was just about to go for a spear against Cody and then Cody kind of, um, was it counters? Hits not one, not two, but three crossworlds. Gets the pin, and yes, gets the three, and he finally finishes his story, and is your new undisputed WWE Universal Champion, and ends the the long three-year reign of Roman Reigns. And the crowd went nuts. We went nuts. Uh, it was a good moment. Everyone came out, and the faces came out. You know, they were lifting him up high. Even uh, was it Cody won the mic. Got the tri Triple A to come out and then obviously thank him for this whole situation. And um, yeah, ended the show on a massive high. And it truly did feel like we had even a bit with Cody, but uh, was it went to Michael Cole, giving a hug, thank you for him. Then obviously, Cole, uh, was it Michael Cole was very emotional. I think we all were. It's kind of an end of an, it's the start of a new era. It just feels like it at the moment. And um, I think Cody's the perfect champion for this new era. So he finally gave, yeah, finally finished his story. And it was a great moment. And, it, and yeah, it was, just, it was just a great way to end the show, and it overall put up, it's just a fun night. Like, you know, six matches, two and a half, three, three hour show, pacing was great, it was fun, I enjoyed it. So, um, yeah, so that was my, um, so night two, I enjoyed night two a lot. So, yes, yeah, so let's go and dive straight in, let's look back at both night one and night two, and find out what one was the best. What one was better, let's find out. Uh, I'm going to let you know what one I enjoy, what one I enjoy. I've got a feeling you know what one I enjoyed the most, so yeah, let's talk about it. So yeah, so we talked about night one, we talked about night two, so let's kind of dive into what was the better night. Um, I'm guessing from probably length of night two, and obviously the length of night one, you can probably guess that night two was, I think, was a better night. Let's be honest, it was. It was like, had the pacing was better, I think the matches were a bit more, more, more like the crowd more involved in it. Obviously the main event kind of um, overshadowed a lot of it, but it was still really fun. Um, had Every match had kind of everything that you know, you'd want. Night what night one was, but I think it's like, it, 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 it was the problem with the idea that the main event had to be so long. So a lot of matches felt like they were cut down for time. I mean, uh, the opening match was good. I enjoyed Becky versus, I said I enjoyed Becky versus um, Rhea Ripley, but I've seen that match a thousand times. So it's nothing really changed in that part. Obviously, uh, the tag team ladder match was fun, but obviously the stipulation was a bit confusing. And obviously, R2 got his moments, so good for him. And the Miz got their moments, that was fun. Uh, was it Jimmy and Jay was um, was like, what, 10 minutes, for 11 minutes for a match. It was supposed to be about two bro brittle rivalry against brothers. Should have been given at least 20 minutes at least. But they could put that more on the main event. Okay, fair enough. But yeah, obviously the Gunter and Sami Zayn match was, yeah, you know, got the win there. Uh, but yeah, it's something fit off about it, but I did enjoy it because obviously I like Sami Zayn, big fan of his, and obviously Gunter now can focus on other things. But it's a good moment. Obviously, won it in front of his, you know, in front of his family. It's a good moment, so that was good. Obviously, we had the uh, uh, three man, you know, the f f uh, six man, uh, fit six woman match. I mean, uh, obviously, it was uh, Damage Control going against, you know, 
uh, was it Bianca Belair, obviously in the ta uh, was it Naomi and uh, Jay Cargill. Jay Cargill looked great in this, so that's fine. But yeah, just the main event was fine. It was long, but it was, it was good. Obviously, it set up the main event not too very well, but just it was a slug to watch a little bit. And um, I feel like some of the matches deserve a couple of times, but it was a good show. I don't think it's like the like I think the word underwhelming would probably be the word for most of it. Um, it's kind of sad, but you know, it's. It, I think the saying goes with night one, uh, the second night's always better than the first. In this case, it was. And obviously, we've just talked about Drew win the title, then losing it. Great moment, obviously, the poor Drew. Uh, the, uh, the Philly Street fight, great. By the way, adding it made more interesting for a match that I know really cared about. That was really fun. Obviously, uh, the. Uh, was it uh, LA Knight first AJ, AJ Styles was you knew it was going to be good but it was actually a bit better than I thought it would be but obviously yeah, that got a win it was good we obviously had uh, was it the triple threat with the United States Championship that was, I actually gave the most time but I can see why um, everyone looked great in this match to be fair and obviously I don't like Logan Paul but it was probably pretty good in this match to be fair so yeah that was good as well obviously we had uh, Bailey get win the title uh, the women's title that was really a nice moment and obviously we had the situation obviously the main event with Cody winning and it was paced quite well it was really fun so I think night two is better than night one um, let me know when you think below um, I think this overall show was great and two nights were awesome now so it, if this is like a kind of standard we're going to get for this new Paul Levesque Triple H era um, I can't wait to watch I can't wait actually first time in a long time I'm going to watch Raw obviously just record it after Raw but I'm going to go and watch it and obviously watch Smackdown I feel for the first time in a long time I feel like I, can, I really want to watch WWE and actually go on um, you know, and watch it. So, um, yeah. So, um, yeah. That's my thoughts on WrestleMania 40, 14, Night 1, Night 2. As I said before, let me know in the comments below what you think about the show, what you thought of WrestleMania 40 as a whole. Um, yes, I hope to do more videos like this in the future. Um, obviously, we're trying to do more, uh, was it wrestling reviews um, in general? Uh, yes, and obviously more just videos in general. So, yeah, please subscribe. I hope to do more and hope you enjoy. Please let me know. Um, so, yeah, so all more to say. I've been Stuart Vine. And... Have a good rest of your day, and yeah, wrestling, you got to love pro wrestling, it's an awesome thing. So um, yeah, so I can't wait to talk more about pro wrestling, so until then, have a good rest of your day, and see everyone later on. See you later everyone, bye bye.